Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. My name is Dr. MCR and this is GED Math Test 25. All right, so question one today is a basic arithmetic question. It's a percentage question. So it says 5% of workers at a construction company earn minimum wage. If three, uh, 33 workers earn minimum wage, how many total workers are there in the company? All right, so whenever I have to do a percentage problem, I always like to have a system, okay? Because that takes away a lot of mental stress of being like, oh my God, how do I, you know, solve this? So this is a system I use, and I'd say that, you know, you could probably get through maybe 85% of questions on the GED using this system. Not all of them, but, uh, you know, a big chunk of them. So I do a little box like this, and uh, each of these boxes represents something different. So we have the part and the percent on the top lines, and then the whole and 100 on the bottom lines. So why do I do this? So the reason I do this is because uh, the GED usually gives you three of these numbers, and they ask you to find the fourth one. Okay, and also because this whole uh, box is going to represent an equation. Okay, so we'll see this in a little bit. So th here we go. <laughs> so it represents the part divided by the whole is equal to percent over 100. Okay, so if you have three of those numbers, you can set up your equation to find the um, missing number, so to speak. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this uh, in this problem. So it tells us 5% uh, of workers uh, at a construction company earn minimum wage. Okay, so they're giving us that 5%, so that's going to go under our percent box right there. Then it tells us if 33 workers earn a minimum wage, how many total workers are there in the company? So they're telling us specifically the group within the whole company that earns minimum wage. So the part, okay, is 33, 33 workers, part of the company, not the whole company. And they're asking us uh, how many total workers are there in the company or what is the whole number of people working there. Okay, so that would be our X. And now that you have this set up, you can see you have three numbers um, and you just have to find the fourth one. This is now going to be pretty simple because now you can go ahead and set up your equation like that. So on the left side, we have the part divided by the whole, which will be 33 divided by X is going to equal five divided by 100. OK, and now all you have to do is figure, find out that x. So the way you do this is, first of all, you're going to multiply that x by 5 like this. So that would give you 5x. And then you're going to multiply that 100 by 33. That's going to give you 3,300. OK, and now pretty straightforward, right? All you have to do is isolate that x. And you would do that dividing both sides by 5. The reason we're doing this is because now on the left side, we can go and get ahead and get rid uh, of these two numbers because five divided by five is equal to one. And that gives us 660. Okay, so that 660 represents the total number of workers in the company. 33 is the part of those 660, which is the ones that earn minimum wage, and they represent 5% of the, of the company. Okay. All right. So these questions, as I said, sometimes can be a bit tricky, but definitely recommend that you have a system. It can be this system or any other system that you find useful, but definitely have something um, where you could do these questions, you know, pretty quickly and, and easily. Um, I've left a link in the top, a card, excuse me, in the top right corner. I have a video with a, like you know, 45 minutes or 30 minutes worth of percentage questions where I ask you different uh, parts of the of the box so that you, um, you know, learn how to use this if you're interested. All right. Uh, excuse me. So question two is an applied arithmetic problem. Here we're going to look at ratios and review bar graphs. So it says um, a YouTube channel is reviewing the number of viewers it receives during a four month period. Approximately, what is the ratio of viewers from August to May? All right, so before we go ahead and, and solve this question, first of all, let's review what it is like to uh, look at a bar graph. Uh, first thing you should do is always look at the title because this is telling you what you're looking at. Here it's telling us that we are looking at YouTube viewers. 
then look at the y-axis, which is the vertical axis, which is telling you here uh, the number of viewers. All right, so we start at zero viewers. We go up to 100 viewers in increments of 10. And finally, you want to look at your horizontal axis, which is the, the x-axis, and this is telling you the months. So if you look uh, more specifically, it's telling you the YouTube viewers in May, June, July, and August. Okay, this is what you're looking at. So if we go back to our question, it's telling us what is the ratio of viewers from August to May. So since they're t telling us August to May, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to block these two months in the middle out so you don't get confused. And it's telling us again ratio of, of viewers from August to May, okay? Not May to August, August to May. So like that. Okay, so look at the column on the right, the August, and I want you to follow it to the top of the column. And then when you get to the top, follow it to the left, to the y-axis, and that's telling you you had 80 viewers in August. Do the same thing for May, follow it to the top, and then to the left, so 60 viewers in May. Okay, so that's your ratio, 80 to 60. Now, for the most part, the GED always wants you to reduce or simplify these ratios. So what you would do here is you find a common denominator that is a number that divides by both of these numbers. Um, in this case, it's 20. So you would divide both sides by 20, and then you would uh, your ratio would be 4 to 3, okay? So your correct, correct answer would be B. Okay, question 3 is an algebra problem where they ask you to simplify this polynomial. All right, and initially when you see these questions, you're like, oh my god, it looks really difficult. Um, it's actually not difficult. What it is, it's messy. Okay, so it's messy, but if you can start to clear out the mess, you'll see that it's pretty straightforward. All right, so what I always like to do is I always like to look at the answers first in these kind of problems, because if you can eliminate a few of the options, it really decreases the stress uh, considerably. All right, so let's look at the, the, um, the answers really quickly. So we have 14x to the third, 5x to the third, um, etc. Um, so when you simplify a polynomial, uh, what you have to do is that you have to add common terms. So you would add all the numbers that have the same um, exponent, all right? So all of the numbers that have x to the third power would be added together or subtracted. Uh, same thing with the numbers that have the x squared, uh, the numbers that have the y, etc. All right, so if we look at the first uh, set of those numbers, the ones that have the x to the third power, we have... Um, 10x to the third, and we have 4x to the third, all right? And we are adding these two numbers. So whenever you add uh, numbers that have the same exponent, you don't have to do anything with the exponent, okay? So you just have to add the number in front of the um, of that. You only have to add the, the, the 10 and the 4, okay? So you would add 10 plus 4, that's 14x to the third power. So if you look at your your answers, you can see that in A, we have 14x to the third. So that's one possibility. But if you look at B, right, it says 5x to the third. That is not possible, right? Because we said 10 plus 4 is 14. So we can go ahead and, and get rid of that option. If you look at C, yes, that's correct, 14x third. So that might be the answer. But if you look at D, again, it says 5x to the third. That is not possible. We said it has to be 14x to the third. Okay, so now you see you've removed two options, uh, which is great. Going to decrease your stress a bit. Instead of four options to deal with, we only have to deal with two. All right, so as I said, um, this is a mess, um, so what we're going to start doing is to start to clear out the mess. And we're going to start at the far right of the equation. So if you look to the far right, you should see minus 2, and that minus 2 is multiplying uh, y plus x. So what you want to do is use the distributive property here, where you multiply that 2 by y, and you're also going to multiply that minus 2 by x. Okay, so your equation is going to look like that. It's going to be even messier. All right, so now that we have everything, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start uh, simplifying. All right, so we're going to start with common terms. Let's start with the x to the third power, which we said was going to be 14x to the third. So we've done that. Let's get rid of it. 
Next, let's, let's look at numbers that are x squared, and you can see that we only have one. So we now have minus 4x squared. Let's get rid of that. Now let's look at the numbers that have an x. So we have a plus x and we have a minus 2x. So uh, that would give us a negative x, right? Get rid of those. And all we have left is that 5y minus 2y, which would give us 3y. All right, so that's it, folks. Uh, your correct answer would be that. It would be letter C. Uh, 14x to the third minus 4x squared plus 3y minus x. Okay, so one of the two options that we had already um, found initially could be the correct answer. Okay, so that's all there is to this. Kind of messy, but you can see that pretty straightforward. Okay, question four is another algebra uh, problem. This is a word problem. So it says, a basketball team, let me just grab a drink, excuse me, is giving a local charity $3,000 and 50 cents for each ticket over 500 sold for one game. If the X represents the number of tickets sold and they sell 510 tickets, how much will the charity receive in donations? All right, so these problems are always a little bit messy as well. So let's take it step by step. So they're telling us in the problem that X is gonna represent the number of tickets sold. Okay, and we know that is 510. And then they said that for every ticket over 500, they're gonna give them 50 cents, right? So number of tickets sold over 500 is gonna represent um, whatever tickets they sell minus 500, right? Because it has to be everything over 500 if that makes sense. Okay, so the way that we set up our equation would be like this. We say uh, the team is giving them $3,000, which they said uh, right off the bat, they have that, plus 50 cents for every ticket over 500. So they told us in the question that they sold 510, right? And we would subtract that by 500 because they specified that they would give 50 cents for all those tickets above 500. All right. So they've only actually sold 10 tickets above that 500 limit, um, that threshold rather. Okay. So that's how you would set up your equation. And now what you do is um, you're going to go ahead and use that distributive property where you're going to multiply that 50 cents by 510 and also by 500. So if you do that, you end up with uh, 255 minus 250, and uh, that's $5 plus the uh, 3,000 that they had already given you. Okay, so that's 3,005, which is option B. And our final question today is a geometry problem looking at ordered pairs. So I've noticed that there's a lot of questions in the GED about slopes and this and that. Um, and this is a question of ordered pairs that looks at, um, you know, different points on an X and Y, um, you know, where you have to find the points on an X and Y axis. Okay, so the question reads, uh, which of the following ordered pairs shows the location of the blue dot? All right, so you're going to go ahead and find the blue dot. And the first thing that we're going to find is step one would be to find the x-axis of that blue dot. So how do you do that? Well, the x-axis is the horizontal line. So what you would do, find your blue dot and follow the blue dot down until it hits the x-axis. So it's hitting it at negative eight. So the x-axis would be minus eight. Now what you're going to do, step two, is find the y-axis. So again, locate the blue dot and then follow it with your finger to the Y axis, which is the, the vertical line, okay? And it's hitting the axis at three. So your Y axis is three. All right, and what is an ordered pair? So in an, in an ordered pair in geometry, we always put things in alphabetical order. So our ordered pair would be X followed by Y right? Because they go in that order in the alphabet. So our ordered pair would be minus x comma three. And that's all there is, folks. Okay, so that would be option A. All right, folks, uh, as I said before earlier, stay safe, but also, you know, be positive. This is going to 
this uh, coronavirus thing is gonna kind of blow over sooner or later. Use this time, use this time to, you know, make progress with your GED if you can, if you're working from home and you, you have that luxury um, of time, use it um, to, to, you know, make progress. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please stay safe and uh, have a great week. Take care.